Last year, I concluded my big retrospective review series on the DC animated original movie catalog, and it was a ton of fun. Since then, my video on Apocalypse War has sort of blown up, at least by my standards, and it got me thinking on another series I could do that would be just as fun and varied. My first thought jumped to the MCU, but there were a few problems with that. First, there are far too many videos detailing the MCU as both art and as a product, so I would struggle to find anything new to go over, especially when trying to have a relatively quick turnaround for the videos. My next thought was turning to the Godzilla franchise, but then Up From The Depths already has a fantastic retrospective on his channel. Plus, some of those movies are really bad and not in an enjoyable way, so I don't think I'd have as much fun doing them, and not to mention they're all really niche. So I was struggling really hard to come up with a series that I could do. And then it hit me. Ghibli. Studio Ghibli is a Japanese animation studio helmed primarily by directors Hayao Miyazaki and Isao Takahata, and Miyazaki in particular is known as Japanese Disney. These movies are pretty much all critically acclaimed films that I haven't watched and have been meaning to, and those that I have, I haven't been that impressed by. So, why not analyze them and see if we can find the magic that all of these other folks in the world have found and fell in love with? And that's what we're going to do starting today. I won't promise to be on any kind of schedule, and unlike last time, I'm not drinking to these films because a lot of them are kind of heady, so I'll need to be paying closer attention. Oh, and I'm not doing that awful 3D CG piece of crap thing that apparently came out recently. All that said, let's jump right into the series, shall we? And where else to start but with Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind stars the titular Nausicaa in a strange world overrun by toxic forests and giant bugs. The film opens with our heroine exploring within that forest and finding an ancient artifact of some kind, only to be drawn into saving an old friend who is exploring separately from her. Upon calming down that rampaging ohm, Nausicaa is reunited with one Lord Yupa, the so-called greatest swordsman in the land, who is trying to uncover the mysteries of the toxic forest in an effort to save the remnants of humanity from extinction at its hands. Soon after returning to the titular valley, Nausicaa notices an airship approaching and crashing, and it's soon discovered that the airship was housing an ancient weaponized entity called a giant warrior, which will grow from the egg located inside the ship. The next day, the valley is attacked by a fleet from the Tolmekian Empire, whose ship had crashed. Led by Princess Kushana, the Tolmekians attacked a rival state known as Pegites for control of the giant warrior. Nausicaa and the people of the valley are then caught in the middle of the resulting war between Pegite and Tolmekia, where their very way of life is threatened by both the Tolmekians and by the insects that turn wrathful from their war. In the end, it's through an act of kindness that Nausicaa quells the Ohm Swarm's rampage and, witnessing her bravery, both other parties leave the valley in peace. Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind is a film that I'm a bit conflicted over. On the one hand, it's a really impressive film for its time with the amount of complex shots and the number of fantastical designs that had to be made for this world. On the other, this movie is boring as all hell. Make no mistake, I like slow-paced media to a certain extent. One of my favorite anime from the 2010s was Grimgar of Fantasy and Ash, which was an incredibly slow-paced show. The thing about Grimgar was that it was a slow-paced show which was punctuated by stark moments of violence or tragedy. Everything was treated very realistically for the type of show that it was, and every moment that occurred was a very heavy punch, from the party's first kills to a death that happens midway through the show. With Nausicaa, the slowness is used to set up this world that ultimately doesn't matter. The minutiae of the world doesn't factor into the story in any significant way, so the first half of the movie, which is largely devoted to setting up this world, feels like a massive waste of time. And perhaps a better use of that time would have been to give our main heroine a personality. As is, Nausicaa is… nice, I guess? She's kind-hearted and courageous and, oh hell, let's just call her for what she is, a big old Jesus metaphor. She seems to have this innate understanding of the insects and everything else in the world to a spiritual degree. She has a prophecy written about her where she comes forth from a field of golden light, and she even dies because of the sins of man and is resurrected by the closest thing to a divine source as this film has. Is this a flaw of the movie? I'll leave that for you to decide, but for my money, Nausicaa was an extremely boring main protagonist. She's already a perfect being, so she doesn't really have a cohesive character arc, so most of the film sees her simply reacting to the atrocities being committed by the various human factions. And yet, she never offers up any practical solutions to any of the problems that anyone is facing. She just keeps yelling, please don't kill each other. Stop it! All this killing must stop! 
violence is wrong. We should be friends with the bugs. And she's portrayed as unequivocally correct in this stance of hers. Don't do this. I beg you, please, please stop this now. It's too late. Despite that the forest literally poisons people and kills them, consumes entire nations, and the bugs will literally stampede over the entire planet and destroy everything in their path for no reason other than that they're in a bad mood. Unfortunately, the other characters can't really help out either. The only one I remember by name is Lord Yupa, and that's only because he's played by the great Sir Patrick Stewart in the English dub. The rest all have one character trait, and their designs don't really differentiate them in any meaningful way. The only other standouts are the two villains, Kushana and her Weasley advisor. From the archetype and the arc that Kushana goes through with her gaining a respect for Nausicaa through their interactions, you would expect the advisor to seize power and for them to have to work together to stop him. But thankfully that doesn't happen, even if the idea is played with. One of the better moments happens when news arrives that Kushana is MIA. The advisor muses that this is his chance to rise to power, and then when she returns, he quietly muses to himself, that dream didn't last long, before dutifully helping Kushana like nothing happened. And I thought that was cute. In general, from the few Ghibli movies that I've watched, one of the studio's strengths is that there are rarely any outright villains in these stories. Rather, the antagonists are usually presented as having their own faction's best interests at heart, and the issue arises that those interests conflict with every other faction in each representative story. And that plays out here with Kushana and the Tolmikian Empire being opposed by both Pejite and the people of the valley. However, just because they aren't cartoonishly evil doesn't mean that any of the villains or factions are good good or fleshed out. While I could mention the pacing, which felt really, really weird with being too slow in the beginning and too fast at the end, or I could mention the really shoddy voice acting, and I will mention one part of it later, but really that all doesn't matter. Above all else, the biggest issue with the movie is that we simply don't care about what's going on. For all of the time that the film spends in the valley before a lot happens, they don't spend any of it making us care about the valley or its inhabitants beyond a baseline feeling of pity when these peaceful people are attacked. So yes, it's a shame that these people's way of life was upended by this empire, but my engagement starts and ends with simple pity. The politics of the world don't intrigue either, so the entire final conflict is left feeling very limp. This isn't helped by the fact that the giant warrior, a creature that has been built up as the ultimate destructive force for the entire movie, is given two minutes of exploding things, and then it melts into goo, having accomplished absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of things. So that was about 20 to 25 minutes of setup wasted along with the entire reason that these different factions met in the first place, as the valley would never have been disturbed should the giant warrior's egg not been a factor. Now from what I understand, this film is just a very truncated version of the original manga, and fair enough, like I said, the pacing is really weird, but I don't think this excuses the absolutely awful story structure that the film was given. If I have to talk about the world in which Nausicaa takes place, I would call it inconsistent. Even though I think originality is overrated compared to execution, there's no denying that this feels like an original fantasy world unlike anything we had seen at the time. That said, it rarely ever makes sense under even the smallest lens. So, insects rule the planets, but that isn't to say that mammals and birds are extinct. Nausicaa gets a little Pikachu companion early in the film, which is clearly a rodent of some kind, and at least Lord Yupa rides a totally not a chocobo, so birds still exist as well. But these two animals are the only creatures representative that aren't humans or insects, so it's really weird. Also, the insects have healing powers, and there are underground caverns underneath the ceiling slash floor of quicksand. Somehow, I could go on, but forgive me for not wanting to put in the effort for a world that I routinely was disinterested in. But if you watch this film and make mental notes of rules, you'll find that most are broken by the end. As one more small example, Nausicaa needs help launching her Stark Tech glider when going after the crashing airship in the beginning. Help me launch, girl! When later, she launches on her own from a standing position and even dips into the water when doing so with no repercussions. Again, I could go on, but I won't. In terms of production, it's once again a mixed bag. The soundtrack was absolutely excellent, with a weirdly varied set of styles used, from beautiful orchestral tracks to rocking 80s synth tunes. 
On the other hand, I found the general visual design a bit boring. The world of Nausicaa is often praised for veering away from the traditional fantasy look, and I would be a lot more impressed had the designs had any kind of realism or practicality to their forms. Not to mention, I just found most of the designs ugly, which I'll admit is very subjective, and I won't hold it against the film too much. One area of contention I think I'll face for the series is that I'm watching the dubs, specifically the Disney dubs that came out in the 2000s. On one hand, yes, I usually prefer subbed anime, but on the other, I'm watching these with my brother and he'll endlessly bitch about having to read, so here we are. To that end, wow this dub was bad, and that's not really on the actors either. Although, Shia LaBeouf was incredibly miscast as the useless anime boy that comes into the film in the second half. I introduce myself first. I'm Asbel from the land of Pejite. I'd like to thank you for saving me. While the other voices were alright, the script is what lets the movie down. It lacks flow and prose, resulting in a lot of stunted deliveries and a general feeling of stiffness. Sometimes contractions should have been used to make the dialogue flow better, other times the translation of certain terms can lead to a muddled meaning, making watching the movie in this form less than ideal. Overall, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind was a disappointing start to the Ghibli backlog. From my limited understanding, what Ghibli movies excel at is atmosphere, and unfortunately this film had too much to set up with its world and politics to make way for that. That world and those politics never grabbed me like the film wanted, and the main character, who was just stuck in the middle of a random conflict between two nations, is one-dimensional, and a little too much like Rey from the new Star Wars trilogy for my liking. But unlike Nausicaa, at least Rey had a little bit of an attitude. This girl is as bland as a second coat of paint, and watching this film was about as interesting as waiting for it to dry.